I, I feel like I look like Lord Farquaad sometimes. Okay, no, 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 okay. Hi, good morning. It's Jenny. Um, I am a blogger here, based here in LA. I basically write about sustainable living. I try to offer my tips and little ideas on ways to lessen your waste. And um, I also post about clean beauty and some, you know, sustainable fashion brands. And today I'm just gonna have you guys come with me. Generally try and like dedicate one day to composting and um, I take care of my chickens, two chickens that I have. Hi, oh my gosh. Do you wanna come out? Okay, no, 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 okay. Okay, they're having their breakfast right now. All right, so I've had the chickens out for some time and I have to step out now, so I'm gonna go put them back into the coop. You made it pretty easy. <laughs> okay, we'll put you back first. Okay, calm down. So my hair, I kind of keep it relatively simple. Um, I actually just cut my hair a couple weeks ago. Um, it used to be like down here and I never really did anything to it aside from like putting some volumizing spray or like sea salt spray or something. Um, but I cut it hoping that I would have to deal with it less and now that I have shorter hair, I realize that you probably have more upkeep with trying to make this look presentable because if not, it just like, I, I feel like I look like Lord Farquaad sometimes. Anyway, I love using this volume spray. Um, usually I'll put it on with like damp hair, um, but right now it's kind of, it's like second day hair. Uh, I put it on anyways. It's, you just apply some right at the root. This is a new bottle. I finished my other bottle. I'm pretty liberal with it because I feel like with my hair it, it, it's very easy for it to kind of just like flatten out again um, but this one keeps it intact as long as I remember to spray it all over and then I just like run my hair through my scalp and it'll stay damp for a little while but as soon as it dries up it kind of lifts up the hair um, and then I like using a little bit of rose hair and body oil just giving it some shine so yeah I just apply it I apply it to the ends um, because that's where it's kind of dry and brittle the most and it's a good it's a body oil too so sometimes I'll just slather it onto my fingertips, my arms and stuff. Um, and that's what I usually do. So now I'm gonna go change and I'm gonna go head over to the refill store. Um, there's this refill store that I normally go to to get my liquid soaps, um, some like spices and little like household cleaning items. Um, I'm gonna make a list of what I need so that'll help. And I'm gonna gather all the little bottles that I take to fill in. Um, and then we'll go. All the things that I needed to refill. Now I'm gonna head back home. I like to prep um, a cold brew and cellar juice and um, maybe some smoothies. I'm not, oh, oat milk. And then get started on some stew. I'm gonna go let out the chickens. Hi, babies. <laughs> on Sundays, I really like to make cold brew and it's just, such an easy way to make coffee for yourself, which requires little waste. Um, um, I have some whole coffee beans in here. Um, I make enough for like seven days worth and it's just, it's great. So let's make them.
that's done, you just take this and dump it into the jar where you want to make your cold brew. I'm gonna fill up the rest with water. I give it a little swirl. So yeah, I used to actually buy a ton of coffee every single day, um, like 10 years ago. And then I told myself two years after doing that, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna invest in a Nespresso machine. Um, because at the time, like Keurig and the little like espresso pods were becoming a fad. And I think Nespresso was the only one that had like fully compostable pods. And so I would bought one for myself and I'd used that for six years or so. Yeah, almost six years. Um, after that, I was like, you know what? I need to find a better way. I would always recycle those. I would put them away. Um, and anytime I would go to a like a store that would receive, that would take them back to recycle, I would bring it with me. So I didn't feel too bad about using them, but at the same time, they they still require the use of aluminum and like a lot of it's en it's energy intensive to make. So I thought, why not just make my own coffee? It'll be much more um, cost effective, and I, it doesn't utilize any of those materials. Um, so here we are. So next, I'm gonna make us some celery juice. So now that I have some leftover celery pulp, I'm gonna add some bananas and apples and a bunch of other um, vegetables and fruits to make a smoothie so that nothing goes to waste. Now I'm gonna go empty out my little um, compost bin. Um, I have one outside here in my backyard. So this pumpkin actually grew in my backyard, which is kind of crazy. Um, but I'm gonna chop it up really quick before I do dinner um, for the chickens to eat at because they keep on pecking at the door. I gave them food, but I think they just want me to hang with them. <laughs> so this is honey. I don't think I formally introduced her before, but she's my favorite of the two. <laughs> she, um, she'll actually like respond and she'll follow me and stuff, um, and she likes being pet. So, hi. All right, so this chickpea stew calls for canned chickpeas, but I got um, dried chickpeas because I had gotten it from the bulk section, and the reason why. I did that instead of canned is because just shopping in bulk in general saves you money and it saves you a lot of um, excess packaging. So um, if there is an ingredient that I need that is provided, you know, in bulk, then I will go for that. chickpeas have finally softened a little bit. Now I can finally start on this chickpea stew. So we have sweet onion, red onion, and ginger, and garlic. All right, so we've added the chickpeas, spicy chili flakes, and some turmeric. All right, now we're gonna put in the cans of coconut milk. 